IBYS. I'm Phil Forsyth. I'm a sports physical therapist with the Jackson Clinics, and we're here today talking about some of the most common injuries that soccer players will experience. Up on the list next, we're looking at a calf strain. Now, these are some of the most common injuries that a soccer player will experience, in addition to ankle sprains. However, these ones are particularly interesting because they're primarily associated with a lot of your jumping, cutting, and quick deceleration movements that overload that tissue and cause an injury. So when we look at the calf muscle, there's two major portions of it that we're looking at, and today we're gonna to go over the evaluation and examination to determine whether or not you need to see a physician, a physical therapist, or you can manage this injury on yourself. All right, we've got our friend Ben here, and we're gonna take a look at his calf and see what's going on. So, Ben, I'm gonna have you lay down here. And we're gonna start with him lying on his stomach. So when we're talking calf strain and injuries of the muscle, we're looking at a couple of key things. First and foremost, visually, we're looking for bruising. Number one clear sign of whether or not an injury's occurred is whether or not it's starting to bruise. So when we look at the calf, it actually starts above the knee joint. So you've got one of your muscles that starts above the knee joint, your gastroc, and it starts to taper into that big piece of muscle that everyone knows on the back of their leg. We're gonna evaluate the entire muscle length for determining whether or not an injury's occurred here. So, first thing with palpation, you always wanna start above the knee, and you're gonna just work through what we call your gastroc heads. And now these are the origin of this muscle, and so these can be a particularly notorious spot for injury. We're gonna work that inside and outside calf muscle, and just see what our friend Ben here feels. As we start to work our way down, what you can do to have someone help you too is you can have them push up into your hand at the bottom and really get some muscle bulk defined there. That really identifies what is the calf muscle. You work your way down, palpating all throughout, and they're gonna let you know whether or not anything's particularly painful. What we're looking for here is a couple different types of injuries. Original injuries up here at the start, mid-muscle substance injuries down here through the main bulk of the muscle belly, and then the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon is one of the most powerful tendons in the human body, and it absorbs a lot of body weight force, but it's also susceptible to injury. Two types of Achilles tendon injuries we're looking for are whether or not you've had a mid-substance or an insertional Achilles tendon injury, or you've had a complete rupture of the tendon. If you have a complete rupture of the tendon, you're not gonna have a lot of function here, and that's an immediate referral to a physician. However, if you have a mid-substance injury, either in the tendon here, or an insertional injury here, or a muscular issue, you might be able to see a physical therapist, or you might be able to manage that yourself. Now, now that we've identified where and when you might feel your injury, let's look into loading that muscle a bit and seeing what happens. So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with some passive stretching of the muscle. So Ben, I'm gonna have you flip around onto your back. All right. Now ideally you want this supported a little bit more so that they can get some motion. So I'm gonna act as the support today. And what I'm gonna have Ben do is I'm gonna have him let me know when does he start to feel any pain if he does. Right there, that's when he feels it. And you can also look at their face, they might wince, they might give you a little bit of a sign that says, hey, something's not quite right here. And you're looking for that intense stretch or pain. Pain is one of the biggest indicators that an injury's occurred as well and we're looking to see the quality of that pain. Is it a sharp stabbing pain? Does it just feel like a dull ache? Is it an intense stretch? These are all signs that go into our grading system that we'll talk about later in determining how extensive this injury is. Now the second part of that is we also want to load the muscle itself. So I'm going to lift Ben's foot up here. I'm going to have him push down into my hand as hard as he can. Again, what we're looking for here are pain primarily, as well as anything else that you might be able to see. Um, again, whether or not the bruising is present, whether or not there's a divot in the muscle fibers themselves, these are all the signs and symptoms that you're looking for to kind of put together the case and say, hey, we've got an injury here that we need to address. Now, sometimes people will just get um, a low level grade injury. These are the grade ones. These are some of the most common injuries that you'll see during your time as a soccer player, and they may not require you to see a physical therapist or a physician. They can be very easy to manage. You just got to be smart about it. Um, we're gonna go over that in our next video as well. Now, the more concerning injuries are the grade two and grade three injuries. These are the ones that it's probably best to see a physical therapist or a physician about, depending on the extent of the injury. When we talk a grade two injury, we're typically seeing some swelling, we might see a divot in the muscle belly, um, and they will be very reactive with a lot of things. Painful while walking, painful with contraction, 
painful with stretching, it's starting to influence their life and it's not in a positive way. Your grade one injuries, you're pretty much able to do your normal function, you're able to walk around on it, you might be even able to do some sports specific stuff. The differentiator with our grade twos. So, the important thing to realize with these grade two injuries and the important thing to realize with these grade two or grade three injuries is that you probably need to seek help with them. However, the sooner you can get help or get into a physical therapist, you might be able to restore your function faster and get back on the field as quick as possible. Because that's what we know you guys care about. So, in direct or in Virginia, physical therapists have direct access. However, not all PT is created the same. You're looking for a sports certified specialist with a residency accredited, and that's at the Jackson Clinics. We have a sports residency that is awesome and has been committed to working with the athletes in this area. You don't need a doctor's referral to get in here and start checking you out. And we're also very well trained in order to identify when these injuries exceed our scope and we need to refer out to a physician for further evaluation. Physical therapy is the number one way to get yourself back into play quicker, stronger, faster than you've ever done before.